Welcome to AQA Chemistry, GCSE 9 to 1, Topic 8, Chemical Analysis. Pure substances. Pure substance is made from a single element or compound and is not mixed with any other substance. Melting point and boiling point data can be used to distinguish between pure substances from mixtures. For example, if we look at the melting point of solder, which is a mixture of tin and lead. Lead has a melting point of 327. Tin has a melting point of 232. But the mixture has a different melting point because it is made of two different components. You can actually work out the proportion of tin and lead from the actual melting point itself. Pure elements and compounds melt and boil at specific temperatures. And we can use this to identify whether something is pure or is a mixture. If something has a small range of melting point, just one or two degrees, we can assume it to be pure. If it has a large range, we can assume it to be a mixture. Formulations. A formulation is a mixture that has been designed as a useful product Many products are complex mixtures in which each chemical has a particular purpose. For example, chocolate. Formulations are made by mixing the components in carefully measured quantities to ensure that the, the required product has the required properties. And we see this on the back of packets when we look at the ingredients. We can see that chocolate bar is made of numerous different ingredients combined in specific proportions to give it a particular flavour and shelf life. Formulations include fuels, cleaning agents, paints, medicines, alloys, fertilisers and foods. Chromatography. Chromatography can be used to separate mixtures and give information to help identify the substances in the mixture. Chromatography involves the stationary phase and a mobile phase. For example, in paper chromatography, the stationary phase, the one that doesn't move, is the paper, and the mobile phase is the water or the solvent used. As the chromatography runs, the mixture of inks within the components travels in the mobile phase, the water, and spends some of its time on the stationary phase. The more soluble a substance is, the more time it spends in the mobile phase and the higher it moves up the chromatogram. The separation depends on the distribution between these phases. Different com compounds have different RF values in different solvents, which can be used to help identify the compounds. The compounds in a mixture may separate into different spots depending on the solvent but a pure compound will only produce a single spot. To calculate the RF, we measure the distance of the spot from the centre of the spot to the base pencil line that's drawn, divided by the distance that the solvent moved from the baseline to where the, the chromatogram ended at the end. For example, the RF value of this spot would be 3 divided by 6 would be 0.5. Now it doesn't matter how large your chromatogram is because this is a ratio of course. We can also tell from the chromatogram whether something is pure or whether it's a mixture. In this example we only have one spot so therefore we can assume it to be pure. If it had two or three spots then we can tell it had two or three components in a mixture. If those spots have a similar RF value we can assume there to be the, a similar or the same substance. Here's a past paper question to test your understanding. A student investigated food dyes using paper chromatography. This is the method used. Put a spot of food colouring on X on the start line. Put spots of four separate dyes A, B, C and D on the start line. Place the bottom of paper in the water and leave it for several minutes. Figure 5 shows the apparatus the student used. Question 1. Write down two mistakes the student made in setting up the experiment and explain what problems one of the mistakes could cause.
And as you can see from the diagram, the start line is actually in the water line, and that shouldn't be the case. The start line should be beneath the water line because otherwise it's going to run in all directions. Whereas if it's above the water line, the water will draw it up the paper and therefore the spot will travel in one direction. We can also notice that the start line is been drawn in ink, and if that ink is soluble in water, the ink will actually smudge and cause spots as well. So what the question examiner is looking for is the water level above the start line and the start line drawn in ink as the two mistakes and an explanation of what's going to happen because the water level is uh, above the spots then it, the food colours will dissolve into the water or the ink will run or smudge. Another student set up the apparatus correctly. Figure 6 shows the student's results. The result for the die D is not shown. Calculate the RF value of A. Now to do this, we obviously measure from the centre of spot A to the start line in centimetres and then divide that by the distance from the solvent front to the start line in centimetres. Now the actual values that you can uh, you obtain will depend on the size of the image on the screen but because it's a ratio the RF value that you should obtain should be the same as the answer. So you should have got 0.34. Obviously if you had the, the print copy of the paper then you would have got 2.8 and 8.2 but these will be slightly different for you. Now die D has an RF value of 0.8 and the question asked to calculate the distance that dye D moved from the chromatography paper. So to do this, what you would need to do is measure the, the distance from the solvent front to the start line and actually times that by the RF value, which is the ratio of the distance the dye moved compared to the distance of the solvent. Um, and you should get 6.6 .6 centimetres if the distance from the baseline to the solvent front was the same as the paper. So again, that value might change depending on the size of the image on your screen. Our question four asked to explain how different dyes in X are separated by paper chromatography, and this wants four marks. So it's looking for an extended answer here. And the things that it's looking for are that the solvent moves through the paper, so the water moves through the paper, and that the different dyes have different solubilities in the solvent and at different attractions to the paper. So this is, as we talked about in the video, the difference between the attraction to the, the, the mobile phase and the stationary phase. And therefore, they're carried at different distances. So you have four points to explain how chroma, chromatography works. Identification of common gases. There are four gases that you need to know the test for. And in the question, they want you to be able to explain the apparatus and the observation. I've also included a video here, a, a photo there for you as well. So the first gas is hydrogen. And as you may know, this is a burning splint or a lighted splint. It's held at the end of the test tube. And, that, and if it is hydrogen, it burns with a pop sound or a squeaky pop. Uh, the test for oxygen is using a glowing splint, not a put-out splint, a glowing splint, and the oxygen will relight in oxygen. Fourth gas you need to know, a third gas you need to know about is chrom uh, carbon dioxide, and, um, and what we need here is aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide, which is the chemical name for lime water, and the lime water turns cloudy in the presence of carbon dioxide. And the last gas is chlorine, and that turns damp blue or red litmus paper white as it bleaches the litmus. Flame tests. Flame tests can be used to identify metal ions called cations. In the table we can see the five metal ions that you're expected to know the flame colours of. Lithium, which is crimson, sodium, which is yellow, potassium, which is lilac, calcium, which is orange red, also referred to as brick red, and copper, which is green. If a sample containing a mixture of ions is used, some flame colours can be masked, so it's important when conducting a flame test that the, the sample is pure and also that the wire used in the flame test is perfectly clean. This past paper question 
It says the technician wanted to find out which bottle contained the sodium salt and which bottle contained the potassium salt. Explain how the technician can do this. And what the examiner is looking for is the fact that you would use a flame test and that sodium would give a yellow flame and potassium gives a lilac flame. Metal hydroxides. Sodium hydroxide solution can be used to identify some metal ions. Solutions of aluminium, calcium and magnesium ions form white precipitates when sodium hydroxide solution is added. Iron 2 forms a green precipitate, iron 3 a brown precipitate and copper 2 a blue precipitate. Only aluminium hydroxide precipitates dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide solution so we can use this property to distinguish it from calcium and magnesium ions. In this past paper question the examiner says when sodium hydroxide solution is mixed with a solution containing copper ions, Cu2+, copper hydroxide, CuOH2, is formed. Describe what you would see when these solutions are mixed and write the ionic equation for this reaction. Well, in the first response, we were looking for a blue precipitate, so we always give a colour and state. And then for the ionic equation, which is three marks, we would show that we'd have copper 2 plus ions plus 2 moles of hydroxide ions because the charge of the copper is 2 plus, so therefore it's going to attract 2 moles of hydroxide ions, would form copper hydroxide as given in the, um, the question. And you will get one mark for the correct species left hand side, one mark for correct species right hand side and the third mark will be for balancing, that is putting a two in front of the hydroxide ions. Identification of anions. There are three anions you need to be able to identify. The first one is a carbonate. We use dilute acid. In reaction with dilute acid, carbonate will form carbon dioxide which can be identified with lime water. Halide ions, so chloride, bromide and iodide are identified by adding silver nitrate acidified with dilute nitric acid. They will form a precipitate and the colour of the precipitate indicates which halides present. So silver chloride is white, silver bromide is cream, silver iodide is yellow. And then finally sulphate ions, identified by adding barium chloride solution, again acidified in the presence of dilute hydrochloric acid. And they will form a white precipitate of barium sulphate if sulphate ions are present. Now you would have performed required practical seven which uses the anion tests as just discussed, the metal hydroxide reactions and also the flame tests. Instrumental methods. Elements and compounds can be detected and identified using instrumental methods. Instrum instrumental methods are accurate, sensitive and rapid. Flame emission spectroscopy is an example of an instrumental method used to analyse metal ions in solution. So as opposed to laboratory tests that you do, this instrument will provide a more accurate, a more sensitive and a quicker test than what you carried out in required practical seven. Flame emission spectroscopy. In flame emission spectroscopy, a sample is put into a flame and the light given out is passed for a spectroscope, so very similar to a flame test, but we analyse the light in a little bit more accuracy. It's much more sensitive and quick, quicker. The output of the spectroscopy is a line spectrum, which can be analysed to identify the metal ions in solution and measure their concentrations. So here we have an unknown, and then we match up the lines present, and we can see that we have strontium as the unknown because the lines are in the, the number of lines and the position of the lines are in exactly the same places. And to finish off we have another example uh, past paper question which gives the emission spectra, uh, spectra of five metal ions and an unknown which tells us we have a mixture of two metal ions and then what we do is we match up the number and position of those lines and we can see by matching these lines we have one, two and the number of lines here and we have a positive for calcium 
and we can also see that we have lines that are in the same place as sodium. Explain why a flame test could not be used to identify the two metal lines in the mixture. It's because if a, a flame test would give a colour and the two metal lines would give colours which would um, make the, the, color, uh, the flame colour uh, indistinguishable. So the correct answer is we can see if you have calcium sodium ions and two different colours, so the colours would mix or marks each other. And that's the end of topic eight. Thank you.